Luciana, how significant would this be if we had mental health first aiders across the majority of companies and organisations? We've just heard from one employer, Thames Water, about the difference that it's making in their workplace. So one of the stats I've heard specifically is they've seen a 75% reduction in employee absence and, and sickness. And this is one mechanism. It's by no means a panacea, but there's clearly many examples from so many employers across the country that already see the value in ensuring that they have people in the workplace are trained in mental health first aid in the yeah, same way that we know what our physical health first aid is we know where to go if we have a burn or we cut ourselves or yeah. have a sprain it's ensuring that there's a person no, who has that extra bit of training to support people in the workplace and is your proposal the idea to make it a legal requirement for employers to have people trained in this way indeed and so it's already a legal requirement for large employers to have a physical health first aider and while the regulations um, say that there should be mental health first aid it's not explicit and people will be aware that a number of years ago we enshrined the principle of equality for mental health in the Health and Social Care Act, this idea of parity of esteem for mental health. If we're serious about contending with our nation's mental health crisis, that should extend to our workplaces in the same way it should extend to our places of education. We're not going to solve the challenges of, of mental health from the Department of Health alone. This is one mechanism where it's already making a difference right across the country. Do you support it, Lee? I think it's a really interesting idea. I think it's a really good idea. I'm sorry I couldn't come to your debate a few days ago. Um, but it, it, when I was reading your debate this morning, I think, it's, I think it's really something that we should look at. And as you say, we've already enshrined that parity, so it's important that we actually deliver on it. What about the oh, sorry, go on. I was say about the debate? It was actually in this whole sea of what's been very, very difficult few weeks in Parliament to see parliamentarians from across the House of all parties come together to agree on something. And it was a backbench motion. It was supported by over 70 MPs from across the House. Um, there was unanimity in, in support for this principle. Are there mental health first aiders in Parliament? Um, we, uh, well, I don't know if it's specifically mental health first aiders. Again, we know where to go to if we have a, a physical injury. There are there are specific phone lines that we can call, but uh, as far as I'm not, not, I'm not clear that there's mental health first aiders. Um, Helen, uh, the new statesman. Uh, no, I think it's a really interesting idea. The one thing that does slightly worry me is there's no stigma attached to breaking your leg or getting a burn. I think mm. there is a still a lot of stigma around being depressed or being anxious or not being able to kind of cope. And those conversations are going to have to be had very sensitively in a way that doesn't make people worry that, hang on a minute, is this an, an HR issue? You know, am I being kind of dobbed into people? That's going to be a tough, tough thing to get right. It is. And, and uh, again, reflecting on the example of Thames Water, they have, uh, I think it's over 250 of their staff that actually have coloured a specific coloured lanyard so people know who to go to. So actually, already they know that someone has a bit of training and they ha they're perhaps a bit more sympathetic. And, and actually, in and of itself, this principle and this, this idea, I think, will help to break down some of those um, taboos and, and that discrimination that we, we know still exists within um, our, our society and across the country. Yeah, but how do you guard against people feeling that they might be demoted or that they're not up to the job but because they've come forward yeah. honestly to talk about a mental health problem? Well, already you, you can't discriminate against someone, you shouldn't be dis discriminating against someone because of mental ill health. Um, and the fact that you, there are many enlightened employers that are taking this step is indicative that they treat mental health in exactly the same way they treat physical health. Again, it's about extending what is already happening amongst some employers to right across the country. And it's clear that, you know, if we look at the cost of our economy of not contending with this issue, the issues of absenteeism or presenteeism from mental ill health, this is costing our employers. I mean, I'm guided first and foremost by the social and moral reasons why this is important, but actually to our economy, it's costing us upwards of £10 billion pounds just within the workplace alone of not contending with this issue. So it's as much as employers' interests as it is uh, in the country's interests as well. I think it's a very interesting idea. I mean, it sounds like the right sort of thing. I think if you, especially you can do it in conjunction with a uh, physical first aid course and so much of that. And then to be very clear, this is not a replacement for clinicians, people that are trained for mm -hmm. years on end. This is an, ad an additional element that can make a difference in the workplace to, again, tackle that discrimination, those taboos as well. So what do they do? these first aiders because as you say it's not going to replace and shouldn't replace um, health professionals dealing with depression anxiety possibly even people having suicidal thoughts so what, what will they actually do just talk to them which may well, be enough in, in, the, in, in, the, in the in the most acute examples and where actually a mental health first aider can make the greatest difference is if they encounter a colleague with suicidal ideation or someone who's, con who's contemplating taking their own life and let's be very clear that this is an issue that affects 6,000 people every year in our country and it's something that we should be doing more to do more, more about. 
I myself have um, almost completed that mental health first aid training. There's a whole section within it about how you support someone that might be having those very, very serious um, thoughts. There's, there's lots of different ways in which you can do the training. There's, there's a number of different providers, but that in the extreme is something that can really make a tangible difference to saving someone's life. But in addition to which, it's very much a signposting role, and it's also about talking about it in the way that doesn't stigmatise how someone feels. It's about showing someone you know, what the resources are that are available, because because the discrimination exists, particularly, for example, in the construction industry, it's actually the area where we, have, we um, see the greatest incidence of mental ill health, where people you know, hold back so much that it's, they have to wait until they're in a crisis to, to get that support, that someone with that additional level of um, training knows how to talk as well. The language is very important, can make that difference. So will everyone be advocating companies sign up to this? Yes. Absolutely. You will? <laughs> no reservations yeah, there, as far as that is concerned. Yeah. Luciana, it looks like you have got unanimous support here. Anyway, that's all from us today. And of course, BBC News will be following the statement at 3.30 this afternoon. Bye-bye.